All right. Uh, thanks, Glenn, uh, for that wonderful introduction, and uh, Gerald Knizek for these shirts. And um, without much ado, we'd move on to the introduction. Um, as you know, hi, I'm Punya. And I'm Matt. And we both want to speak. <laughs> so we decided to flip a coin to see who would be able to talk today. And I won. <laughs> Um, but I still want my voice to be heard. So we stole an idea. From one of our favorite intellectuals, Stephen Colbert. So he has an approach called The Word, where he has a speech. He's accompanied by text alongside of him. And this text is in somewhat of a different voice, sometimes agreeable and sometimes disagreeable. And using this technique in our talk, you are going to get two, two for, for the, the price, price of one. one. So this is my space. And this is my space. Um, and so for the most of the presentation, Punya will be speaking, and I'm going to be texting on the left. So you'll be hearing me, but in a different way. All right. Ready to start? That's the end of the intro. So we begin. Thank you, Matt, for that little text message there. It's early in the morning, it's 8 a.m., and neither of us is a very, you know, morning person. So we appreciate um, that you guys showed up, and we thought that there's, you know, a little bit of a pressure on us to be a little exciting, <clears throat> if not for you guys, at least to wake us up. And so one thing we thought maybe we could do a song, um, but I can't sing. It turns out Matt can't either, okay. Uh, but we can borrow ideas. Um, so we appropriated an idea from Larry Lessig. Um, no, we appropriated an idea from Larry Lessig, and we came up with a refrain. And the refrain is in three parts. Okay? So here we go. Start refrain. One, teaching with technology is a wicked problem. Wicked problems require creative solutions, and teachers are designers of the total package. End refrain. All right, let's do this again. <clears throat> the refrain, teaching with technology is a wicked problem. Wicked problems require creative solutions, and teachers are designers of the total package. So that's our refrain, and we'll be coming back with it over and over. Okay, all right, fine, move on. Number one, teaching with technology is a wicked problem. Let's start with what we call pedagogy. Now, these are rules, theories, ideas of teaching, whatever you call it. Okay, teaching... Um, but there's one thing we can be sure of, that pedagogy is messy. Messy and complicated, it's not as straightforward as it looks. Well, without even getting into theories and stuff, just think about the various roles teachers play. For instance, you want teachers to be wise and assistive and thoughtful, funny, um, dramatic, flexible, creative, humble, fair, you know, all these, this is a pretty amazing list. So we can agree that teaching is pretty messy. But clearly pedagogy is not everything we have to think about. So what's missing? No, it's not multiple choice quizzes. Teaching is always about something, something that we call content. And content can also vary a great deal. Um, everything from geology, biology, physics, astronomy, art, music, chemistry, computers, what have you. And the funny thing is that every discipline is messy too. And how do we know that? Well, look at all these battles that have been raging. In fact, one can almost call them wars that have been raging over things like the canon. No, not that kind of canon, but about the kinds of books that students should be reading, whether it emphasizes Western civilization versus other groups which have been um, marginalized in the past and so on. Let's think about the math and science wars. And of course, the phonics versus whole language debate. So all these things are up for contention and argument. So we've covered that, you know, both of these individually are pretty messy, but that's not all. What happens when you combine the two together? This is where Shulman came up with the idea of pedagogical content knowledge, and that's Lee Shulman, who incidentally was at Michigan State um, when he came up with this idea. And the idea here is that content areas in teaching have to be transformed, brought together in interesting kinds of ways to make it accessible to students. So, for instance, a mathematician would not necessarily be a great teacher of mathematics. Same goes for a psychologist, artist, or scientist. Quality teaching 
is the transformation of content. It is the act of learning to think in a disciplined manner. And if you're interested, this is a great book um, by Janet Donald called Learning to Think, Disciplinary Perspectives. I'd recommend it strongly um, to anybody who's interested in some of these ideas. <clears throat> so Schulman had this great contribution, which I think really moved the field forward. And the question comes up as Matt's texting me from here, um, where's the technology? All right, so where's technology? <laughs> um, yeah, sure, PowerPoint uh, could be there, but I think we mean much more. Web 2.0, blogs, digital videos, Second Life, Geometer Sketchpad, Wikipedia, Sim Life, handheld computers, MP3 players, flytop, pentop computers, which I think is the worst name ever for a product, uh, World of Warcraft, Linux, Blackboard, MapQuest, and the list goes on and on and on. And so for once I think Matt is right that this is expecting too much um, if we think that people can keep up with this um, rapid change. So one of the things we argue is that instead of focusing on keeping up with every piece of technology or software, we argue for something di different. We argue for developing a thoughtful and playful attitude towards understanding the landscape being created by these new technologies, what one can call this new media ecology that we live in. Now these digital technologies that we are talking about, the funny thing about them is that they are pretty messy too. Okay, um, I'll give the example of the iPhone. If you you know, most of you have seen it. Um, if you look at the iPhone, one of the things is that with software, it's pretty protein, which means that once you move away, one of the biggest restrictions on cell phones was the number of buttons that you had on it. Now, once you move to a complete software screen, if you want to add another function, it's just writing some more code. And that's one thing very powerful that software lets us do. Well, with that comes a problem, which is that it's unstable. Okay. Um, asked me at some point about the problems I'm having with Best Buy and my iPod for the last three months. And I'm sure all of us have faced these error um, messages at some point or the other. On top of that, these new technologies are opaque, which means that, you know, there was to be a time when, when you would buy a car, you'd kick the tires, and now you take your car and they reboot the car, because the car is a computer, right? That changes the meaning of booting the tires, right? And, you know, any technology now, it's not obvious from what it does, how it works inside. And that makes it tricky as well. But despite all this, technology changes everything. Ah, yes, um, IT, information technology, changes everything. Um, <clears throat> let's look back at these three components that we have talked about so far. Pedagogy, content, and technology. And let's do the Schulman move. And when I say the Schulman move, what Schulman did is took pedagogy and content and overlap them. What we're going to do is we're going to look at content and technology and pedagogy and technology in turn. So we do the Schulman move on content and technology. Now there are lots and lots of examples that we had actually because of time we didn't include. But we included one. And that is literacy technologies. Somebody once said that the book is a machine to think with. And I want us to think a little bit back to when it was an oral culture and the move to writing. And this is a quote um, from um, a dialogue by Plato where he argued, yeah, I know this is a long quote, so I had to reduce the font size there. So argued that once we move from an oral culture to a writing culture, we're not going to trust people anymore. We're going to trust the book. We're going to go look it up. So anything I say today, you can go look it up. And that's a fundamental change in the way we think about our relationship to information, to each other, and so on. So this is interesting because we think of print and writing as being this great thing, but at some point there is something lost in that transition as well. Now if you look at the 